interesting one. So you're also saying you use uh, Chad GPT to help you with some math. I, I, I kind of knew that was coming. Yeah. I mean, I'm a I'm a huge fan of using it for simple things like or things that would take time, and there's no reason why you should waste time doing them if they're fairly simple. Yeah. And well, time consuming. It, it comes down to what we were talking about earlier about you know injector flow rates and things like that. Like we have so many fixed variables in the engine that we know. The engine, you know, a lot of guys will say an engine is an air pump, but an engine is also just full of math. You know, have you ever seen any of those engine dyno softwares where guys can change camshaft specs and an intake valve size and runner length and things like that? Have you ever seen one of those? No. So it's like almost like a CAD software that all... It is. Like engineers use it for like how strong a bridge will be. Right. They can do... Huh. So we can do that with engines. And so what's cool is, is like even something basic, well, basic in terms of necessity of the engine, like a Gen 5 LT... You know, they have injection timing. Hmm. Well, with the injection timing, it really does need to be on time because you have a quarter of the amount of time to inject fuel is what you do with a port injected vehicle. Yeah. Well, you can give chat GPT, say I can tell it, all right, here's the injector size. Here's the factory start of injection timing table. I'm putting this camshaft in with these injectors. How is this table going to change? And it can mathematically calculate that. Just to, It's not going to be a set in stone thing, but it, yeah. it'll get you in the ballpark. So if it saves me... 15 minutes of math, I'm going to use it. But then you also have simple things like uh, injector flow rate, say from a different era of vehicle where you don't have the exact injector data. Chat GPT, give it the old injector data, tell it what you want it to spit out. It'll build you an Excel sheet. Because you ever built, you ever worked on Microsoft Excel? Yeah. It takes forever to input all that. Chat yeah, GPT just the amount is, of time yeah. just to do it is so tedious. Yeah, so it'll spit it out in 15 seconds, 20 mm. seconds, something like that. Yeah. But it's gotten to where – so with HP tuners, you can export logs to to a CSV file. So chat GPT can't work the editor, but it can process the data from the scanner. So theoretically, you could tune an early ECU with chat GPT because if you – as long as you know – how to get the information out of your scanner, whether it be fuel trims, wideband data, whatever, chat GPT can process that. Huh. And it could it could export you out a math calibration. If you give if you tell it, all right, I've using this math calibration, I've got these wideband values, and you ask it to fix it for you, it actually will. See, that sounds like a cool video title to me is Chat GPT tuned my car. I almost thought about <laughs> If if we're working with the Escalade V, I thought about doing a video and have ChatGPT tune the neural network on the Escalade V. Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, that would be pretty cool, too. Yeah. Just blow everybody's mind. Because ne neural network is already, like, the taboo subject of Global B. Well, like, it's funny even hearing neural network when we're talking about, like, a car ECU. Yeah. Like, that, those two things don't need to overlap, and it's so weird hearing that. It is. And the, and, and the thing is, is it's new to us, but it's not new. Yeah. So chat GPT fully understands a neural network. You can tell it if you want it to change the axis that you're working on, anything you need to change, it'll tell you. If it can't tell you the exact figures, it'll at least tell you how to get to that point. It's also weird because, I mean, what is chat GPT, two years old? Yeah, it's baby. Like this I mean, is it's just the start. The more and, and it'll remember you the more data you feed it. Oh, yeah. It's weird how it like remembers the person that you've like because – I talk to a lot of people, and they're like, yeah, I've never played around with it. I'm like, Phew. yeah, it's good. It's, it's weird. It is. It, once you start playing around with it, you're like, oh, this will just replace a lot of the other things I use on a daily basis. Yeah. That's like the other day I had some Ford injectors that were being used in an LS application, and I just told ChatGPT, hey, I want an Excel sheet for these Ford injectors into this GM vehicle. Here's the Ford data. Here's what the table looks like I want you to convert it to. And not only did it do it, but because I've asked it to do so many Excel sheets, it formatted it. Like, it made the colors the way I like them. It gave mm. me basically like a heat map kind of thing. But it remembered me. Yeah. And so those little details are the difference between, you know, if you've got somebody that's tuning a vehicle, sometimes guys will just go in there and they'll just tune the math V, knock out some timing, call it good. But when you're wanting to be detail-oriented, it takes a lot of time to, to convert this data over to something that the ECU is actually happy with. So even... Was it a couple days ago? Was it when you saw that post? I was tuning on an 03 Corvette Z06, and I had just a mild camshaft in there. But in those cars, there is a table that is idle torque versus AC pressure. And I've tuned so many of those cars, I already have known good tables. 
So I was curious, can chat GPT figure this out? So I flat out told it, I was like, hey, I want you to build me user math to log this. So I had it go from all the way from the beginning. It built the user math to actually log the AC pressure for me, because that's not a PID that you can actually see in HP tuners for yeah. whatever reason. So it built the user math for me. It told me how to build the histogram or chart, whatever they're calling it now. And then it literally told me exactly what PIDs it needed to be fed to build me a table. Hmm. It was within like a tenth of a foot pound of torque off of what I had from probably, I don't know, 20 or 30 hours worth of tuning on the AC pressure versus yeah. torque table. And it did this, I mean, 30 seconds. Well, then the question arises, do you think that theirs was better? It's very possible. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Because like, okay, it may have been a little different, but that doesn't mean that yours was Correct. the perfect right. scenario. Right. It may have just been like not even, maybe not even noticeably different, right. but just noticeably slightly. But that's, I'm and I'm okay with that. I like, mean, when you're talking about, I don't know, a thousand boxes, right. it can change those instantly where it would take any tuner and they're scaling and they're doing all this stuff instead of just changing box by box. Right. It's not smoothing. It's, it's box by box. Yeah. But see, that's where I want a perfect tune or as perfect as possible. Yeah. And so if, if chat GPT and math can get me there, I'm not going to be this, you know, chest pounding tuner of, no, I'm not going to let it do it. Like, no, let's evolve with the sport yeah, and let's let it do its work because, you know, an 03 Z06 Corvette is one of the most primitive, you know, LS computers out there. But the fact that it can still be beneficial on an old ECU, I'm all for it. Yeah. Well, people that don't do this stuff are just going to get left behind. Right. And if you can, if you can get to a point where you scale up your tunes and quality but even like scale down your price, but scale up your speed. Like, I mean, that's yeah. like the perfect. And I mean, scaling up delivery speed is crazy in itself, yeah. you know, because we live in a very instantaneous world where somebody expects an email reply. Well, at 24 seven, right. They have to understand that. <laughs> but that is one thing that I would like to train chat GBT to do. do, 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 do.